On today's show, Jabari Smith snubbed in an NBA offseason survey amongst executives, coaches, scouts, that kind of thing. Then we talk about the blockbuster deal between the Utah Jazz and the Cleveland Cavaliers sending Donovan Mitchell to be teamed up with Darius Garland, Evan Mobley, and Jarrett Allen. Some of the parallels taking place in this deal with Colin Sexton being sent back to the Utah Jazz, receiving a new contract extension, as well as the draft capital involved in this deal and how it relates back to the Houston Rockets. Plus, we rank the Rockets five jerseys that they'll be using this upcoming season. We're going to get to all of that and more right here at Locked on Rockets. This is Mission Control Houston. Ignition sequence start. The Houston Rockets select Jalen Green and Jabari Smith Jr. T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. Every time I step on that floor, I'm coming. You're getting somebody who's going to come in with a chip on their shoulder, somebody who's going to come, come in and compete from day one. Six, five, Four, three, two, one. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. As always, I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, native Houstonian, a credentialed media member. I'm also the host of Locked on NBA Mondays, host of the State of the Rockets podcast, as well as the founder of ClutchCityControlRoom.com. Be sure to follow along on Twitter at JT Gatlin and the show, of course, at Locked on Rockets. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We're also on YouTube, so go to YouTube. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Joining us now, as he does each and every week, is none other than Ali Khan Bijani, our once weekly co-host here at Locked on Rockets, Rockets X's and O's expert, brunch connoisseur. Do you have any other titles this week, Ali Khan, or are you just rolling with those two for now? I think I think we'll actually uh, fan of Starbucks. Fan of Starbucks. Okay, all right. I didn't I didn't peg you for a you know basic white girl, but here we are. So all right, fan of Starbucks. Ali Khan Bijani is here, and we have we've decided we're going to push the Shingoon episode. One week into the future, we know we wanted to bring bring you some Shingoon content, but with Eurobasket going on, we're going to have a lot of film to kind of go over to take a look at stuff for Shingoon over this next week or so. So we postponed it, and we have got some big news to kind of talk about on the Houston Rockets front, or maybe more so on the NBA front. That's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to talk about the fact that, A, Jabari Smith Jr. was absolutely snubbed in an NBA survey headed, you know, about who's going to be the best rookie in five seasons. We're going to talk about that right out of the gate. We also want to focus on the blockbuster deal between the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Utah Jazz sending Donovan Mitchell to Ohio. We're going to talk about that and some parallels and potential similarities between things that we can draw from from that deal as it relates back to the Houston Rockets. And then at the very end, we will do our jersey rankings for the Rockets this upcoming season. The five jerseys that the Rockets will have in rotation this next season. We'll rank those one through five, our personal opinion. So, Alec, let's start with this really just disappointing news that in... Disappointing. It, it is disappointing. NBA offseason survey. Why are you coaches, disappointed? Uh, because, why, why, okay, first off, why wouldn't I be disappointed that Jabari got snubbed? Well, wait, wait. For, first, tell the audience what he got snubbed from. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, that's Go what I thought. Him. Like, you're, you're derailing the whole show, and we're like not even three minutes in. Come on, man. Usually we've got to wait till segment two or three for this. All right. NBA offseason survey what the coaches, scouts, and execs are watching ahead of the 2022 2023 season. So, in this poll, right, it's, you know, who's going to be the best player in five years? Who's going to be, you know, favorite for MVP next season? You know, best player next season? All these different, you know, categories as far as just general, you know, feelings about the NBA. And. As it relates to the Houston Rockets, one of the questions was, who will be the best rookie in five years? Now, across 15 available votes, Jabari Smith Jr. did not net a single vote. Paolo Bancaro walked away with six votes. Chet Holmgren also walked away with six votes. Jaden Ivey secured two votes. And Keegan Murray secured one vote over Jabari Smith Jr. Future Clay Thompson right there, man, you know. I am appalled that Jabari couldn't secure even just a couple votes. Like, I wouldn't – look, Alec, I'm going to be completely up, up front with you. If, if Jabari had finished, you know, in third place on this little poll behind Bancaro and Chet, I would have been like, all right, cool. Like, you know, he didn't – you know, maybe a bit of a lackluster offensive summer league from him. Nobody values defense in the NBA anyways. I, you know, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know what to say other than this just goes to show that a lot of the – 
it, it feels like the executives are completely undervaluing what Jabari brings to the table. All right, let, let's relax. All right. No, Aaron we're not Rogers, relaxing. Aaron Rodgers, R E L A X. Relax. Okay. <laughs> Since, can you read the question for me again, Jax? I think the question is very important. What was the question? Who will be the best rookie in five years? Well, I hope none of them are still rookies in five oh, years. Well, who will be the best, essentially best player, right? Yeah. I'm going to go back to the 2016, 2017, and 2018 seasons. And the similar type of question was asked. One of the one of these are, is by Tim Botemps, the, 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 the author of the story and the person who compiled all of them. The other ones are from the NBA GM survey that gets released before the start of each season. And we're going to look at what their rankings were for the best rookies. And you tell me how legitimate or how... Um, how accurate it is in today's time. Okay. Okay. First, this is a 20, I believe the 2015 to 2016 season. Carl Anthony Towns received 60% of the vote as uh, likely to be the best player in five years. Next, it was a tie between Emmanuel Moutier, Jalil Okafor, and D'Angelo Russell. Ooh, yikes. Okay. All right. Now, let me tell you who's in that draft class because I think that's important. Miles Turner, Devin Booker. Terry Rozier. I mean, those guys already are better than the other three we mentioned before. Kevon Looney. You got Montrez Harrell in there. I mean, Rashawn Holmes, who got a contract extension. Pat Connaughton, who's been playing really well. Norman Powell. It still holds up the, the selection. Carl Anthony Towns I mean, I, I, won the majority of that so, vote, though. So, so Ta- Towns is legit. But what I'm saying is we're talking about Jabari Smith not even getting a vote or consideration. Okay? And when you're looking at this list, Town's obviously overwhelming favorite, but you got Moutier, Okafor, and Russell. You know, some of those players I, I've mentioned arguably could be considered better, maybe not than Russell, but at least another two. Let me go, let me go a year later. This is the 2017-2018 season. Which rookie will have the best career? This is a GM survey. Lonzo Ball, Jason Tatum, Josh Jackson, Dennis Smith Jr., De'Aaron Fox, Markel Fultz, Harry Giles, Ben Simmons. Okay. Let me let me let me tell you let me tell you. Um, yeah, there there's oh, some, there are some very questionable oh, names on that list. Also, also another survey. This is this is the GM. Sorry, that, that was a rookie survey. This, this is the GM survey. Sorry, this was a GM survey. That was a rookie survey. S- same year, GM survey, 2016, 2017. Which rookie will be the best player in five years? Seventy percent said Ben Simmons. Twenty percent said Chris Dunn. Six point seven percent said Brandon Ingram. Joel got one vote. Joel Embiid who is arguably the best player in that draft class. That one, one, one vote. 70% with Ben Simmons. I'm honestly not that concerned about this Jabari Smith snub. I get it. You know, Rockets fans want to hype him up. You know, Jabari's going to be great. And he will be. He's going to be a great fit on this team. And next to Jalen. And whoever else you build in next year's draft with. But it's a vote from a few executive scouts or coaches who are likely going to be wrong. And from based off what we're seeing, even past summer league with Jabari, who knows? Who knows where it'll be? Maybe there'll be a guy who's not even on the list of names you just said who's going to be up there. Maybe Jaden Ivey ends up becoming the best player in the draft class. We don't know. But I don't think it's as big of an issue or concern that he's not on the list. It's it, and frankly, you're right. It's probably not. It's 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 something for Rockets fans to you know get up in arms about, to be upset about. There is kind of this you know maybe I don't want to call it a victim complex quite just just quite that far, but there is just a feeling that I, I feel like Houston and, and Houston's players don't necessarily get the respect at times that they deserve or should warrant from around the league, especially from you know the national media, which this is a bit different than that because it's an executive survey. But if there's one maybe positive silver lining to take away from this is we already know based on how the draft went, right? Jabari falling to number three, he's already been very vocal about having a chip on his shoulder. We know about his insane work ethic. We know that he's somebody who strives to be the best that he can be. And just having another thing, right? Another kind of like, you know, bullet in the chamber of like, yo, they're counting me out, right? They're not, they're not giving me my flowers. They're not giving me credit. Nobody thinks that I can be what I think I can be. That could be just, again, more fuel to the fire for Jabari to maximize and eventually realize his, his true potential. Yeah, and, and, and look, look at Jabari. He has all the tools to be a great piece on a team. He's growing offensively. I can tell you, based off of the workouts he's doing in the Toyota Center, he's working on his shot. He's getting, he's getting much better at that, getting more comfortable at an NBA level. I think preseason will get a, we'll get a better idea of who he is versus Summer League. And so 
yeah, I think a lot, a lot of those decisions were based off of summer league and how those guys played, but this could always change. What, what happens if the GM survey comes out in a, here in a few weeks before training camp and the Jabari gets listed as potential uh, rookie of the year, right? This is right now at this point in the summer. I get it. Rockets fans feel like there's a vendetta against him, but let's hold the horses here a little bit. Let's wait till the GM survey comes out. Let's wait till the season starts and ultimately next season. And, you know, these types of these types of questions get asked all the time after the first season. Who's going to have the best trajectory? And I have a very good feeling Jabari Smith will be one of the top people on that list. Also on this uh, offseason survey of coaches, scouts and executives winning in a category 15, oh, which is just unprecedented. Uh, executives were asked who is most likely to be found ordering Starbucks on the way to brunch every Sunday of every single week. And they voted 15, oh, Ali Campagiani, which is just Impressive. I mean, I congratulations, Ali Khan, for you just completely swept them by storm. Coming up, we're going to talk about the Donovan Mitchell blockbuster trade. He will be on his way to the Cleveland Cavaliers. We're going to get there in just a moment after a message from our friends over at NHTSA. Get your French toast. Are you one of those people who thinks it's okay to drive stoned? What's the worst that can happen, right? You end up driving a little bit below the speed limit. It's no big deal, right? Wrong. The truth is your reaction times slow down incredibly when you're driving high. You not only put yourself in danger, but everyone around you. Talk about a buzzkill. Stop kidding yourself. It's not okay to drive high. If you've been using marijuana in any form, do not get behind the wheel of a car. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, get a DUI. And continuing on here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. We are free and available on all podcast platforms, including YouTube. Go to YouTube, search Locked on Rockets. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Ali Khan, what is the mantra? Dude, hold up, hold up. Before we go get going, you know how, how, much, how many times while we've been recording, I've had the itch to be able to do <laughs> the host duties? <laughs> Welcome to Locked On Rockets, <laughs> your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets. I've been wanting to say the hinge line all show today. I haven't even said the hinge line. Wait, Jackson, tell the audience what's up on Hinge. Have you met somebody yet? The uh, there is no update on Hinge. There, there. It, first off, the fact that you think I have a hinge is hilarious. Second. I do have a hinge. It's depressing. No, <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're not. This is, this is not locked on Jackson's like terrible love life. We're not doing that. This is, we're 86 in this segment, this content, okay, Jackson, it's all out the door. Jackson, you can come with me. We can get some French, uh, French toast this week on Sunday at brunch. How about that? All right. That's, that'll make me feel a little bit better. All right. So let's focus in on the blockbuster trade that transpired Thursday afternoon. Donovan Mitchell being jettisoned from the Utah jazz to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah, I mean, I, SAT I, vocab right there. Okay. I know I've got my SAT book right over here to the right, and I'm able to just pluck vocab words, words willy nilly. Cavs are sending Lori Markkinen, Ochai Abaji, Colin Sexton, and three unprotected first round picks in 2025, 2027, and 2029, as well as two pick swaps in 2026 and 2028 for Donovan Mitchell. Now in this deal. Colin Sexton, Cavaliers, had basically been in like a, you know, just staring contest about who was going to budge first on his new contract. Sexton secures a new deal, $72 million sign and trade deal over, I believe it's over four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, four years. And that was a deal that the Cavaliers and the Utah Jazz ultimately all agreed on. All parties agreed in favor of that deal. It was not the, it was not the lowest possible figure that they could have paid Sexton. And it also wasn't the highest possible figure they could have paid. It was somewhere in the middle ground. Because again, Sexton had to play ball to agree to be signed and traded to the Utah Jazz. So ultimately yeah. Sexton got a little bit more money and the Utah Jazz got a player that I feel like, you know, at least they feel, you know, relatively confident in moving forward in Colin Sexton and a huge return for Donovan Mitchell. Ali Khan, I feel like there's a few parallels here that we can kind of tackle, both in relation to the contract that Colin Sexton got and how that potentially relates back to Kevin Porter Jr., as well as just the draft haul that yeah. the Utah Jazz received and the fact that they had the most recent unhappy star on the market and the Rockets are kind of poised to make a jump for the next unhappy star potentially somewhere in the not-so-distant future. Exactly. I think that's the first thing we should start off with here is the Rockets are in good position with the Brooklyn draft capital to be able to use that and bring in a star whenever they're ready to compete. And if we're looking at this trade, it looks like the Donovan Mitchell trade kind of reset the market. Gobert was an outlier in that case, trade five first round picks. I mean, that's a lot. 
But in the case for wasn't eight, and Gobert was technically six, right? Because it was five first round picks, and then it was also Walker Kessler, who was a fresh yeah, first round yeah. pick. So like, tech, tech, yeah, it was a lot. And, but when I look at Mitchell, I'm looking at three first rounders, and if you look at the first rounders in the in the draft swaps, Jackson. I feel like a majority of them come after Donovan Mitchell's free agent, but ne- next free agency in a couple of years. And so that's a great job by Danny Ainge to be able to get that. And I think that's going to tell you what the Rockets will be have to give up, right? The Rockets have all their, their own draft picks besides the, the Russell Westbrook situation and giving the, at least, at least 2024 and a little bit beyond to Oklahoma city, but they have Brooklyn's all the way into that late twenties. That's, that's going to be big. And I think those are the picks that, you will likely have to give up when it is time to get a star. Now, Jackson, let's say we were in the Cavs situation, right? And this is maybe at this point next year, if we have a good season this year, next year, the Rockets doing well, you know, you, you, the following summer, 2024, you can look at potentially trading for a star. Would you give up all of the Brooklyn picks after, 24, after the 2024 season and potentially two more of your own to get a superstar or budding superstar kind of player like Donovan Mitchell? I, I think absolutely, right? You, you look at exactly the position the Rockets are in, and that's that's what you want those picks for, right? Ultimately, I think there's, you know, some Rockets fans who have this idea that, you know, over time those picks would, you know, continue to actually be used in the draft, right? And drafting young talent, right? Obviously, this past year, we saw one of those picks convey in the form of Tari Eason, which is exciting, right? Tari Eason has a ton of potential as a player. But ultimately, those picks, the commodity, the the purpose they serve is to then be leveraged further down the line into an established player to take your team from, oh, you know, talented, young, aspiring, you know, you know, whatever team bottom dweller in the West to, hey, we're going to bring in an established presence to kind of help steady the ship with all this young talent. And that's the move that kind of, you know, catapults you a little bit further up the standings. If you look at the Cavaliers right now, they were impressive last season until they started getting hit by the injury bug to kind of round out the the, the remaining bit of the year. They fell a little bit in the standings. Now you add Donovan Mitchell to that core, and you have a strong core four of Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, Evan Mobley, and Jarrett Allen. That is and an ex- You also have Karis LeVert. You also have Ricky Rubio. You always you also have Seti Osman. I mean you got you got some um you got some you know, good opportunities there to, to be successful. And so I, I think, I think for me, it's going to come down to a few things. I didn't mention it because I want to just provide that context and ask, ask that first question. But the first, the first thing I'm looking at is where is Jalen green next year and the year after. Okay. Look at, look at the Memphis Grizzlies and what they've done. They're building around Memphis. They're building around jaw, Jaron Jackson, and they're, they're budding stars that they have there, like young, good, talented role players. Uh, it, it's an episode for another time, but th- that's something that I do want to kind of explore is the rebuilding timeline and path of both the yeah. Memphis Grizzlies and the Atlanta Hawks, because I feel like their respective timelines, the Rockets can kind of mirror a little bit. Yeah, and so so I guess the, the main thing takeaway from the trade that happened between Cleveland and Utah is that the Rockets will have an opportunity. Nobody expected... I want to say nobody, not many expected Cleveland to jump in and take Donovan Mitchell. But these types of players will become available. This is the inevitability of what the NBA product is now. Players want like to go to teams that give them a chance to win. And I think the Rockets will be in position if they continue to build a core culture and a team, figure out what their identity of their team will be. They can be in position to be able to do that. But Jackson, there's something else from this trade besides this conversation about draft picks and cashing in for a star that I thought was really interesting. The trade was based also on a Colin Sexton extension. What was that extension? Four years, $72 million. What do you think for Colin Sexton, the money? (sighs) That's 18 million per all guaranteed. I I think it's, not a substantial overpay, but I think it's definitely an overpay. And, and I think it's it's an overpay that Cleveland was forced to make to be able to pull the trigger on this deal and get a better player back in Donovan Mitchell, right? That was probably a hang-up as part of the negotiations because, again, the only way this happens is that they, is that they have Colin Sexton both as a piece that the Utah Jazz are interested in as well as a salary ballast to include in that trade for Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, and they still ended up having those three first-round picks and two pick swaps, right? So I bring this up because I'm not comparing the players. I'm not. 
But in terms of the ability to score and potentially be a successful six man in the future, maybe just a great point guard this season for the Rockets. There's a lot of conversation, obviously, around Kevin Porter Jr. Would you give Kevin Porter Jr. a four year extension between 60 to 72 million dollars? My answer coming up on the other side. We're going to get there in just one moment. And final segment here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Now, the suspense is palpable waiting on my answer for Ali Khan's question about would I give KPJ that extension right now? Absolutely not. I don't think there's a reason You're for the a Rockets hater, to, man. You're yeah, a hater. Yeah, I label me a KPJ hater. That's 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 me. That's clearly You're what I am. You're not a real Rockets fan, man. You're not a real <laughs> Rockets fan, man. Look, all right. I have every hope in the world that KPJ will realize his potential this season, that he will take a gigantic step forward. All of the above, right? And he's been putting in an immense amount of work this offseason trying to better his game. He's Ever since his New Year's Day incident, right? It's looked like he's had his head, you know, square on his shoulders. Yeah. All of that to say, though, there are off-court concerns with KPJ. And there are just, even just on-court concerns, right? We haven't seen him be consistently productive for an entire 82-game season yet. We've seen it in spurts. We've seen it in stretches where he's looked really good. We've also seen stretches where he's looked really, really bad. And so this is the year. It doesn't make sense for the Rockets to shoot themselves in the foot and extend KPJ early, right? Even if it's at a relatively team-friendly deal of, say, four years, 60 million, right? 15 million a year, average annual value. I still don't think that's worth it right now because you need to, I think you go through this year, let him hit restricted free agency. If he completely shows out this season, great. Maybe you're on the hook for an extra, I don't know, four or five million a year this off season. You know, you're paying him 20 million a year, something like that, instead of 15 million. At that point, if you're happy with him too, then you've solved your point guard problem of the future. Exactly. That's And to me, that's the most important thing, right? Is if KPJ has a fantastic year, then great. You're going to feel 110% confident in locking him down long-term, whatever that contract may actually look like. But if you try to, you know, shave a little money off, if you try to, you know, save a little bit on the front end, and you're just like, you know what? We think he's going to work out. We think it's going to be great. And you lock him down on a deal now. And then if things turn out poorly, right? Maybe if they don't even turn out poorly, right? I'm not talking like he's out of the NBA or, you know, he needs to be traded. Maybe he's just not the starting point guard of the future. Do you really want to bring, you know, do you want your sixth man of the year eating up 15 to 20 million in that range of cap room coming off the bench when you still don't have the rest of your roster figured out for what it's going to look like for the, you know, for the years to come? Jackson, it's time to be real. All right. There's a new segment. It's called Getting Real with Ali Khan. Here no, at Locked on Rockets. It's this is not this is not the this is not the social media app be real. If you know what that do you know what that is? I do not I, know what that is. Wow, you is that, old man. Is that, is, is that like truth social? No, no, it's be real is like a it's like a, it's like literally you take a you take a front picture and you take a uh, selfie picture. Or so yeah, you, that's the same thing. You take a front picture and you take a picture of what's in front of you, and like you'll get notification at this moment in time, you have to take those pictures. It's like, it's Oh, I saw, I saw an ad for this the other day. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm washed. I'm old. I don't, I don't do this stuff, but it's, it's time to be real about Kevin Porter jr. I think if you can get a team friendly deal, you take it. I think, I think Kevin Porter jr. Can, even if he's not your point guard of the future, can be a great six man off the bench. And I've said this to you for a couple years now, right? We've talked about this. However, you know, based off of just last season, the season before, he has a lot of fans in the building. Silas likes him a lot. The front office really likes Kevin Porter Jr. And that tail end with Jalen Green to end the season was very productive. And based off of what they're seeing in the offseason, I'm pretty confident it's pretty productive as well. And so if you can get him on a team-friendly deal, maybe it's three plus one or, you know, two plus one, whatever it may be, I think you do it because – you're giving a talented guy like that a chance to continue to grow in his role. And for me, I think you take the team-friendly deal. Now, I'm, I'm with you. If you're not getting the value you want, tell him to prove it. But you have to be ready to spend. And I think right now, with how Rafael Stone is, I think there is a shot that he could get a contract extension before the start of the season and be good. Look at Jay Sean Tate. Jay Sean Tate came back on a team-friendly deal. I think if you're engaging with Kevin Porter Jr., and having a conversation about the opportunity that was given to you here, 
And if Kevin Porter Jr. wants to take advantage of that and stay here, he can. That being said, as a player, you get you should go out and get as much money as you can. This is your career. This is a way for you to be able to support your family, generational wealth, all those things. But ultimately, I think Kevin Porter Jr. may be more open to a team-friendly deal just based off of his experience so far in Houston and how supportive and caring they've been towards his career. The city's and, embraced him, for sure. Yeah. And again, I'm not completely against the idea of it. I, I still think it's it, it's not the right move, but I, I warm up to the idea depending on what the number is, right? Like anything north of 15, and I'm immediately starting to punch the brakes. If you start talking to me about that, you know, 12 to $15 million range, I start getting really hesitant at about 15. But if you could talk to me about a, you know, a, a four for 48 or something, you know, and maybe it's a three plus one type deal with maybe a team option on the end, or maybe, you know, something like that, where it's, you know, a lot of team control over it. Then, yeah, I, I start buying into the idea of it a little bit more. Yeah. But as and, it stands, the Rockets just don't, they don't have their identity set yet, right? They, exactly. they don't know, they yeah. don't know who their best player is going to be when they're contending again yet. It might be Jalen Green. Hell, it might be Jabari Smith Jr. It might be Kevin Porter Jr. We don't know yet. And until, I feel like until the team has a little bit more of a concrete idea of what direction that is for the team, right? And, and again, I think that direction kind of comes with when they make that that all-in move for that next star. That's when the direction becomes incredibly concrete. Then I think you I, have I a think, bit of an idea. I think it also depends on the style of play. Look Very good Kevin, point as well. Look, look how well Kevin Porter Jr. plays off the ball next to Jalen. And that was a thing that people were talking about. Can Kevin Porter Jr. do that? And he did. And he showed that. Even if it was six games. He showed but he, that. But he very much still prefers to have the ball in his hands. Yeah, he does. But at that, at that, same, at that same time, the way the Rockets want to play is move side to side. And you have guys who have been told they should become better passers and want to. Look at Jay Shantae. We've talked about the entire offseason, what he wants to do this offseason. Alperen Shangun being able to be a playmaker on this team, run more pick and roll with Jalen and KPJ. I think... I think in if if the Rockets offense is going to be set up the way I think it will be, I think Kevin Porter Jr. can be a good fit. So let, let's see what happens. I mean, but but I, I I think it's important to discuss that the four year seventy two million dollars. It's a legitimate talking point. I don't think he'll get the four year seventy two million dollars, but I think he can get somewhere pretty close to that. Four years sixty, four years fifty something. And so if that's the case, I think you take that deal because he's a guy who's talented enough. And if you continue to give him the support and help to be successful as a point guard or a potential combo guard off the bench as a sixth man, I think he can do it. All right. Well, that concludes the 147th different should KPJ get extended by the Houston Rockets conversation that has been had not this entire offseason, just like within the last two weeks by Rockets media and fans and whatnot. So on that note, let's shift gears here. We'll end on something a little bit uh, less. It's not really contentious, but, you know divisive whatever um actually it might be incredibly divisive because the the reception of these new rockets jerseys has been a bit of a mixed bag there are some people really? that are in love yeah there are some people that are in love with the hardwood classic jersey and then there's some people that are like i hate them they look terrible the best part is i've had ali Khan, i should i like I, there have been over 10 comments on the youtube page alone and like five and five where it'll be like the shorts are incredible they're fire and then other people are like the shorts look terrible i hate them and i'm like what is going on here so Ali Khan and I are going to do our rankings for the five jerseys that the Rockets will have in rotation this next season. So as a quick refresher for your memory, the Rockets have their three kind of base jerseys, right? They've got the black, the red, and the white. Those are their base jerseys. They are bringing back the mixtape jerseys, the remix jerseys, whatever you want to call them, the pinstripes with the 90s flair and the current Rockets logo, the ones from the, this past season with yeah. the special uh, remix court as well so they'll have those in rotation again and they're adding the hardwood classic edition jerseys paying homage to the san diego rockets of old they will wear those for i believe six games this season so a very small handful of games that they'll actually wear those jerseys so ali Khan, how do you want to do this you want to go first you want me to go first how do you want to rank these you want to go one and one i want to rank them but i also want to give a special shout out to a jersey that i don't think it's enough credit in the historical and in, in the history of rockets jerseys okay so if you if you have one as well um i will save that we'll do our rankings first and we can we can save that one so for me first is black i really like the black jerseys i think even the black jerseys during the harden era when they were the first seed and lost to the spurs in the second round and then when they had the same they have this the nike jerseys in the conference finals those were great. I really like those jerseys. Second for me would be these new classics. 
the white, green, and yellow. I actually really like them. I think it's a nice color. It's a good throwback. It honors the history. I'm glad Elvin Hayes is getting his number retired. He's a great player. All love about it. And also, Jalen Green makes anybody's jersey look good, by the way. That's imagine fair. him. Imagine him holding a little public, like a multi-poo or something with a jersey. I mean, come on. <laughs> he, he, he looks good. All right. Um, next is the red. Um, but actually, no, I'm going to switch that. Pinstripe blues. Pinstripe blues, then the reds, then the whites. But for me, the reds and the whites, you could interchange them a little bit. Um, and I'll stop there, and then we can discuss our favorite jersey after that. Okay, sure. Uh, my list isn't too different. I'm st- I, I feel like I'm going to over time grow on the classic jerseys after especially like seeing them on the court. I worry about the fact that they're going to – since they're not they doing the custom court, court. – they yeah. don't have a court for it, and and I worry that they're going to clash. the the re- the the white, the yellow, and the green is just not going to look right on the Rockets' regular court, and so I'm a little worried about how they're that's just going to. They're wearing them against gonna... the Pacers. Yeah, they're going to. I mean, yeah. that's going to be really interesting. <laughs> so I mean, we'll we'll see what it looks like in practice. But as it stands, the black jerseys are actually my favorite too. I know that black jerseys are so played out at the NBA level, but I love the Rockets black jerseys. The, the when they introduced the alternates that first season, I was stoked for them. They've looked great ever since. Yeah. And this might be a scorching hot take. I like their like actual in rotation black jerseys more than I liked those uh, the playoff earned black jerseys that they only wore like three times. The all black mm. with like the red trim did yeah, not yeah. like those at all. I was not a big fan of those. Those looked like just again they they looked like they were thrown together when you do like the custom jersey in NBA 2K. Like they didn't look yeah, great yeah, to yeah. me. I got gotcha. So I go black. I, I I go pinstripes number two. I love the pinstripes. Ooh, pinstripes. Okay. I think they're fantastic. I'm gonna go red number three. I'll go the classic hardwood number four, and then I'm going with the plain white jerseys all the way at the very end. I could completely do away with those, but I understand you got to have your your quote unquote home and away jerseys. You know, I've never been a fan of like the the I don't know the all white home jerseys. Yeah. They've never looked great to me. Um, interesting. And now can I say my all one of my all yeah go 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 jerseys? go for your your sleeper favorite, and okay. I'll I'll chime in one too. Okay. So there's like this like term, like your eyes, there's a term called like asteroid hyalosis. And what that means is like, there's like golden, like pigmentation in your eyes and it, it looks really, really cool. Right. So when I think about this Jersey, I get that pigmentation in my eyes. My eyes just sparkle, man. It's oh like God. crazy. All right. Let me tell you what the Jersey is. Actually, there's two. It's a tie. The all light blue H town edition jerseys we had a few years ago. I think it was James Harden's last season here. The ba- yeah. The baby blue ones, baby blue ones. Those were nice. The man, love you blue you. jerseys. Yeah. They, they got but, associated with the losing season, but. but and, and then also second, and I think these were the most underrated Rockets jerseys, the red ones they wore in 2019. That was my, that was my sleeper pick too, man. Those, those were, those were so red, clean. Man. Oh, like a lot, those a lot were, of good memories in those jerseys, man. A lot you of would, good memories. You wouldn't think that like, cause it had like a weird, like red on red accent kind of, and you wouldn't think that that would work normally, but it just looked so good. And, and I feel like, especially in the announcement of this new hardwood classic Jersey, there were a lot of Rockets fans who were bringing up old jerseys and ones that they really liked. And that was a Jersey that I constantly saw mentioned online just you know rocket fans were like man they should really bring these back like those jerseys were insanely popular and and underrated for the time period the that they players, were utilized players like them too i remember that season we were in the locker room i used to ask players hey what do you think of these jerseys they love those jerseys man and so so i think those were honestly were the most underrated i know ketchup and mustard and classic and said those are amazing i love ketchup and mustard too but in all honesty those reds don't get a lot of play and they should they were there were some really good jerseys well, that is going to do it for our jersey rankings as well as our little honorary mentions there at the end. Drop us your jersey rankings, the five jerseys that the Rockets are going to be using this upcoming season. Rank them in the comments on the YouTube page for us. We're going to be scanning through those. We'll see who has good taste and who has absolutely trash taste. If anybody comes in and says that the, the base all-white jerseys are their favorites, I might just try to find a way to block you from the YouTube page. I kid, I kid, I kid. Ali Khan, you know the drill. Let everybody know where to track you down at. You can follow me on Twitter at brunch underscore insider. Wait, no, sorry. I mean, uh, rockets underscore insider. Uh, make sure you guys are following us at locked on rockets. Another, another shout out to rockets watch. They've been doing a great job. We will be discussing Alper and Shangu next week. And before we do that, please stay in touch with his games. Watch how he's playing. And the one account that is watching his games live and not just his Garubas as well, other games and talking about it and giving you instant analysis live 
is Rockets Watch. And Jackson's a part of it. So make sure you guys are tuning in and we'll discuss that next week. And that's going to do it for today's episode. As always, thank you so much for checking out the show. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing wherever you listen to your podcast. That's Apple, Spotify, Google, the Odyssey app, free and available on all platforms. We're also on YouTube. Just go to YouTube, search Locked on Rockets. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Remember the mantra, for the house, for the team, for the algorithm. Go comment on the YouTube page. It helps out the show a ton. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to having you back right here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball.